So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and today I want to talk about a feature that came with iPadOS 15 that not a lot of people A know about and people aren't really talking about. So Apple when they announced iPadOS 15 they actually finally brought in some sort of extension support for Safari. Now I know that Chrome has that Safari extension kind of built down and they kind of have that lock and key especially on desktop class browsing because right now you can't get extensions through the Chrome application on your iPad. But Apple decided to bring extensions over to Safari on the iPad, so you can use it on both iPad OS 15 and iOS 15. And I found some cool ones that actually are worth sharing and that I've been using on a daily basis. In the very beginning, when the beta program came out with iPad OS 15, there was very little, if any, actual extensions that were usable. But now we're actually getting a couple big names getting their feet wet in the extensions game on iPad OS 15. And honestly, they work really, really well. So without further ado, here are my favorite extensions for iPadOS 15 that I've been using pretty much on a daily basis. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. The first thing I do want to mention is that you need to be at least on iPadOS 15.0 and iOS 15.0 in order for this to work. So if I go into my About section, you guys can see I'm on 15.2. I'm using the beta program, but again, you can have the regular public version of 15.0 and 15.1 and extensions will work. And the only way to really access the app library or the app store version of the extension store is you have to go into your settings, scroll down to Safari, scroll down again and go to extensions, and then you're greeted with the more extensions button. If you don't have extensions installed, all this will be gone, all these different apps right here, and you'll just have this button and you click on this button and then you're greeted with a app store version that only shows off extensions. Again, you can go back to the normal app store from here, but you can't go to extensions. So you have to go back, let's go to settings, click on more extensions. And then again, you're brought to the extensions version or the little portal of the app store that shows off the extensions. And in the very beginning with iPadOS 15.0 beta one, when I was testing it earlier this summer, the only type of actual extensions that existed were ad blockers, content blockers, and that's literally it. But now you can see that there's some bigger players that are actually coming in now that everybody has iPad OS 15 and iOS 15. So you have the one password manager, you know, language translator, you have some that costs money, right? Like the mapper for Safari, you have X, you know, X search for Safari, Vidmote for Safari, all these different kinds of extensions that ideally will be very usable. Now the Safari extension library is actually very, very small compared to the entire app store. Again, it's brand new. It's something that just came out. So developers are slowly working at it. And I'm sure there's a ton of restrictions when it comes to extensions on Safari. If you're a Safari user on macOS, then you'll understand that the extensions library on macOS is pretty small as well. It's nothing compared to what Chrome has on desktop class browsing. Chrome kind of has a monopoly on it and there's like millions of extensions on Chrome. But again, the Chrome application on the iPad does not allow for extensions. So keep that in mind. But here you can see that the ones that I'm gonna be talking about, there's gonna be four main ones that I'm gonna talk about and they're all free extensions. I haven't tried any of the paid ones. If this gets enough likes, maybe I'll do a paid version, maybe like my favorite paid extensions and kind of see if they're worth it because some of them are pretty expensive. There's like a $30 one in here somewhere that I saw, which I don't even know what it really does. And again, if I'm gonna be spending $30 on an application, it better be doing a lot. Now that we have that out of the way, we know how to get to extensions, you know what software you need to be on. Let's go back into the settings, right? By default, when you download an extension, two things are gonna happen. Firstly, everything is gonna be turned off by default. So you have to go into your extensions menu and turn them on. And then also you might notice that applications get downloaded. So these four applications got downloaded purely because I needed the extensions. If you delete the application, you're also deleting the extension. So if you don't wanna see them here, just throw them into your app library and forget about them. But these applications are purely for extension purposes for me. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is Kablock. So Kablock is just an ad blocker through and through. And the best way I like to show it off is actually on ESPN.com. So what I'm actually gonna do is let's turn it off. Let's turn off Kablock. Let it do its thing. We'll go back to Safari. We'll refresh the page. And then if you give it a second, the ads will show up again because Kablock is turned off. So there they are. You can see that Toyota, there's a banner right here. There's another Toyota ad over here. If you keep scrolling, there's look a couple play ESPN ads that are kind of floating around in the UI. And then all you have to do is go back here, go into settings. Let's go into your extensions, turn on Kablock. And then you'll be able to see that in Safari, the ads are gone. No more banner ad, no more ad over here. The play ESPN ones, they stay because I guess they're part of ESPN. So they're not actual ads, they're just like ESPN ads. 
But again, you can see that it works as advertised. So overall, as an ad blocker, it works as advertised, and I'm a big fan of it, because I don't really want to see the mess of ads all over websites, especially those websites that just bombard you with ads that you have zero interest in. So the next extension we're going to talk about is Grammarly. You guys, everybody knows Grammarly. It's basically a modernized autocorrect. And you can see that I have a little sample over here, and I misspelled respect. I added two Ts to it. And you can see that the underline is a little bit different. Now, it doesn't work like a normal Grammarly that you would see on desktop. It kind of just tells you that it's misspelled. If you want it to autocorrect, then they want you to download the Grammarly keyboard, which is something I'm not gonna do, but Grammarly otherwise works as advertised. It lets you know that things are misspelled. So if I do the like this, you can see that it's like double underlined as opposed to just a regular underline. So the underline is a little bit different to kind of make it more prominent and let you know, hey, you're misspelling something. So you can also see if it's activated. So if you're on a website that's supporting Grammarly, then it'll be turned on. Because basically, if it's not supported, if Grammarly doesn't support that website, it'll be a grayed out version of Grammarly. And if you click on it, check writing suggestions on apple.com, you can turn it on. I could also turn it off if I want to and not have any suggestions happening. So that is Grammarly in a nutshell, very self-explanatory. And one more thing before we continue on with the different extensions, the way you access your extensions is right here in this little puzzle piece in the URL address bar. So if you tap on that little puzzle piece, you can see which ones are turned on which ones are being used. So you have Grammarly, Pipifier, or PIPifier, however you guys want to say, and then Transfer Recipe. So the next one I'm going to show you is that PIPifier, or Pipifier, whatever you guys want to call it. Let's go to YouTube. Let's go to the regular homepage. Let's click on, you know, this one right here. See what's going on with First Take. I'm a big basketball fan. Sadly, my Miami Heat lost last night. But all you have to do is click on here, click on your PIPifier, and all of a sudden, you got a picture in picture. Now, I know that YouTube got updated. So for YouTube premium, you do get the ability to do picture in picture on some devices. I don't know if it's on every single iOS and iPad OS device. I personally don't pay for YouTube premium, so it's not an option for me, but you can see that it works as advertised, right? You can still go to your home screen. You can make it bigger. You can throw it to the left and right. You can then, you know, open whatever other application you want. So open up notes, still move this around as you can see. So a little bit of an insight of what floating windows could look like with picture in picture. And again, all these extensions are absolutely free and it's hard to believe that Apple and YouTube can't just give this to us free, like it's insane. So this last extension that I wanna mention is by a app called Bring. And the extension itself is called just like a recipe grabber because that's all it really much, pretty much does. So, you know, I'm working from home a lot. I'm cooking, my wife is back working in the office. So I'm kind of responsible for cooking a little bit more. So I've been doing a lot of chicken stuff. And what's nice about this is that all you have to do is click up here and then click on your extensions right here. But you can also see that there's a little second icon or third icon, which I believe you can just click on because it's adaptively knowing like, hey, you're on a recipe homepage. You guys want to save that? So all you have to do is press add ingredients to list. It's going to open the application, but then you can see that it does save it. It tells you exactly what you need. I'm going to add all these items to make sure that I order it on Instacart, do my thing, and then everything is there. And then like you saw, you also have, you have the ability to just bookmark it as well. So if I go back to here, press this, you can actually bookmark the recipe and it creates a little bookmark for you, which is awesome to see. So those are my four main extensions that I've been playing with. I hope the app store and developers kind of get a little bit you know, more crazy. Like I would love to get a color picker tool where I can kind of just scroll through something and see exactly what the hex number is for that color. Cause I do that a lot on Mac OS. So I would love to get an extension like that. More utility extensions would be awesome, but we're moving in the right direction because again, think about it, it's been what? since September that the public release of iOS and iPadOS 15 came out. So overall, been happy with it, but those are my favorite extensions. Let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Before we end it, big shout out to RJ back there with his, you know, Pixel 6 review. Really, really cool. If you guys wanna check it out, feel free and let him know that I sent you. But like I said, that's gonna do it for this video. Like I mentioned, finally some bigger players are getting into the Safari extension game, especially on iPadOS 15 and they work as advertised, right? Grammarly works great. The ad blocker that I use, Kablock, absolutely amazing. It does everything that you would expect it to, and it's absolutely free. Then there's also the picture-in-picture -picture one, which I love because again, for some reason, YouTube refuses to natively support picture-in-picture -picture through the YouTube application, and it just makes it a lot easier to use it through the Safari kind of web browser in order to get that picture-in-picture -picture quality that we want and we've been wanting for a long time. There are some inklings that I think if you're a YouTube premium member, you can do picture in picture, but I don't wanna pay 10 bucks a month for YouTube premium. YouTube is free, it's free to consume, and I don't wanna have to pay 10 bucks a month just to A, get auto playback or playback when the app is closed, and B, to get that picture in picture. But all in all, I've been loving these extensions. 
So far, they've kind of been helping me out, even the recipe one. You know, I've been cooking a little bit more since working from home, and I gotta make sure I got all my goodies next time I go shopping. But that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Leave some comments down below of your favorite extensions. And again, all the ones that I mentioned are absolutely free. There are some paid versions as well that I'm gonna try out. Maybe I'll do a top five paid extensions that are maybe worth your money, because some of them are pretty expensive. There's like a $30 extension in there. But again, the last thing I do want to mention is that for these extensions to work, you're actually downloading the application and then in turn, the extension begins to work. So it's not like you're only downloading a little piece of it for the extension, like you're downloading the entire Grammarly app, you're downloading the entire Kablock app and etc. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave a comment down below. Which one was your favorite? Which one are you guys gonna to try to use? And if you actually, you've been using extensions at all with these new updates. But until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Thank you.